Task number five, intracorporeal suturing. For this task, you again have two needle drivers, one pair of scissors, and one suture cut to six inches in length. Accuracy must be within one millimeter of the black dots indicated on the Penrose drain. The time starts once the instrument is in the field and ends once the suture is cut. Average time to completion is 112 seconds. Several tips for improving your efficiency on the intracorporeal suturing. Again, you can orient the suture in the needle driver before introducing any of the instruments into the box. The needle should be oriented in a direction that it will be helpful to grasp it with the right hand and start the exercise immediately upon delivering the suture into the box. This will be demonstrated in the uh, video demonstration of the exercise. Also, orient the needle in a crescent shape on the right or left side, depending on which part of each throw you are doing. The hub and suture should be parallel to one another, and this orientation will assist in encircling the instrument with the suture to perform each throw of the knot. This will also be demonstrated in the video demonstration. It is expected on the FLS exam that you alternate hands with the needle when tying each successive throw in order to lay down square knots, although in a practical setting the needle may not switch from one instrument to the other in order to form an intracorporeal suture, but alternation is expected on the FLS exam. And finally, to complete the exercise, it is helpful to leave the free end of the suture ungrasped and then bring the end of the suture that has a needle still connected to it over to align with the free end of suture and then grasp both of these before cutting to complete the exercise. For this exercise, the intracorporeal knot, we recommend that you start by setting the needle into the non-dominant needle driver in such a fashion that it will be easier to load once it's introduced into the box. In order to do this, hold the needle driver in your non-dominant hand at the angle at which it will enter the box. Then hold the needle at the angle at which you want it to go through the Penrose strain. And when you bring the two together, you can set the needle so that it will be facing the right direction once you introduce it into the box. If you do not take advantage of this, you may find the needle pointed in an opposite direction or in a direction that is not helpful once it's in the box, and it will be more difficult to set it into the driving uh, needle driver of the non-dominant, excuse me, of the dominant hand once it is introduced into the box. You can take advantage of this because time on this exercise does not start until the first instrument enters the field. So this setup can be done without negatively affecting the time of your exercise. Task number five, the intracorporeal suture. Um, as demonstrated previously, the needle was oriented in the non-dominant hand outside the box to make transition to the throwing hand easier once you're in. Time on this exercise starts once the needle and instruments enter the field of view. Once the needle is placed through the black dot, simply pick it back up with the same hand that threw the needle through and use your non-dominant hand to protect the pen rows. At this point, orient the needle in a crescent shape so that the hub and suture material are roughly parallel and then use the metal of the needle to your advantage to wrap twice around the non-dominant hand, grab the free end, and pull the hands opposite to each other to put down the first throw of the square knot. Now take your right hand, bring it across, and roll it over so that you can grab the needle with the opposite hand. And again, align the hub and suture material so that they are roughly parallel and then perform the first wrap using the metal to your advantage. Grab the free end and pull the hands apart from each other, placing the second throw down. And then simply roll the left hand over, grab the tip, reestablish the crescent shape of the needle, wrap it once over the opposite hand, grab the free end and pull apart. 
complete three throws. At this point, we recommend that you leave the free end of the suture loose and bring the needle end to it. And once these ends are parallel, you can grab both, change your right-handed needle driver for a scissors, and cut the stitch to complete the exercise. The time stops once the stitch is cut. For practice purposes, if you choose not to cut the stitch, you can continue to repeat the tying exercise until your suture is sufficiently short that you cannot do any more throws with the needle. But for practice purposes, you may find it more efficient to continue repeating the tying steps. So reorient the needle. First throw, grab the free end, place the knot down, and then continue repeating the tying steps so that you get more practice out of each available suture and each available throw of the needle through the Penrose drain. And this process can be repeated until the suture is too short to perform any more practice throws. But again, for the exercise on the FLS exam, three throws are required before the stitch is cut. As you can see how you continue to get extra practice out of a single stitch.